With the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank and several other major banks over the last week, many are hoping that this isn't going to lead to another massive financial crisis. But this is how MSNBC decided to lead their primetime show all in with Chris Hayes on Tuesday night. Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Today we learned that both the Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission are... Wait, you notice that? Notice that picture? Uh, why would they have Donald Trump there? <laughs> of course. Uh, I've been watching a lot of cable news. I am a big fan of that lesbian on MSNBC, Chris Hayes. He's great. <laughs> Right after the collapse happened, many were joking on social media, asking if the liberal media had blamed Donald Trump yet. But it turns out that those weren't just jokes. They were prophecies, a prediction of the future. We are investigating the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank last week. Wait for Sources it. tell NBC News the DOJ's probe is in its early stages. Part of it will examine whether bank executives sold any stock prior to the collapse. Well, that should be investigated, actually. Now, of course, we should be clear here. I I've covered quite a bit of this in my, my career. Banks can fail without any criminal behavior or, or, or fraud. Uh, I think they could fail also for making bad investments like in woke companies. <laughs> but I'll get into that in a moment. Sometimes they make really bad bets or risky decisions. Sometimes they don't and they get squeezed by a big bank run. We have only started to scratch the surface of what happened. But one thing that does obviously jump out about the situation is... Oh, it's obviously Donald Trump's fault. ...is that it happened in the wake of a big rollback of banking regulations. Because in 2018, Republicans in Congress pushed through legislation to undo a lot of rules for small and medium-sized banks, like SVB, that had been imposed under the bipartisan Dodd-Frank law in the wake of the 2008 crash. Which I don't think affected whether or not banks were buying long-term treasuries because those were never considered to be risky investments. Those regulations were placed on banks to prevent them from making risky bets with their customers' deposits, not buying bonds, which I guess up until the pending collapse of the United States, were considered to be the most financially sound investments. The person who signed that bill into law, the regulation rollback, none other than Donald Trump, it was one of a whole bunch of deregulatory moves he made while in office. In fact, he also oversaw the reversal of a train safety rule. They're literally blaming him for the train in East Palestine, Ohio, being derailed in the chemical spill, even though it wouldn't have stopped the train from derailing if it had the new brakes because one of the axles broke. As this continues to be investigated, it's going to be interesting to see which garbage companies this bank invested, <laughs> I'm sorry, wasted their money on, like pledging nearly $74 million to Black Lives Matter causes. According to their diversity, equity, and inclusion statement, they were more interested in giving money to businesses that were run by non-white, non-straight individuals. Probably like this guy who brags that Finally, and this is not sarcasm, by the way, this is the actual inventor. Finally, a black owned company manufactures a wireless charger for your phone. Well, what did we do without you? This from the New York Times, Silicon Valley bank collapse threatens climate startups. The bank had relationships with more than 1500 companies working on technologies aimed at curbing global warming. Well, I think we found the cause of the collapse right here. When I first saw this tweet, I thought it was sarcasm, but this is real. This is the new Greta Thunberg. This is Greta Thunberg 2.0, Sophia Kayani, however you pronounce her name, who said that the death of Silicon Valley Bank is bad news for climate change. 1,500 plus climate and energy tech companies relied on the bank. She is the new UN advisor to climate change, a student at Stanford who, from the looks of her, she is not eating meat as part of her quest to stop climate change because she obviously has a severe lack of muscle tissue and definitely needs a cheeseburger. Did I say vegetarian? I meant vegan because she's obviously not drinking milk either. With arms that skinny, I would be willing to bet that she couldn't even carry a gallon of milk from the refrigerator to the dinner table. Since Greta Thunberg is just so odd, the climate change movement needed a new face to try to push the propaganda. How dare you? 
The new narrative surrounding the bank collapses is that social media may be to blame. They were the first social media induced bank runs. And so Democrat Senator Mark Kelly is asking whether or not the big tech platforms should be censoring people posting about future possible bank insolvencies in order to protect the banking system. But don't worry, folks, the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the government entity that guarantees bank deposits up to used to be $250,000 is signaling that they're now just going to guarantee an unlimited amount of money. Well, how can they do that, you ask? Well, they'll just print as much money as they want. This has really been an open secret for some time. Here's former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan. This is not an issue of credit rating. The United States can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default. I believe this is economist Austin Goolsby, who is obviously stunned that Alan Greenspan just let the cat out of the bag. Here's the president of one of the regional locations of the Federal Reserve Bank echoing those sentiments. To the person who is about to grab their car keys and go to the ATM and take out $3,000, you say what? You don't need to. Your ATM is safe. Your banks are safe. There's enough cash in the financial system, and there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. An infinite amount of cash. And this is why the memes about the money printers aren't really jokes. They're really just another prophecy of our impending future. Of course, CNBC's Jim Cramer, their financial goofball, recommended people buy Silicon Valley Bank stock just weeks before it collapsed, echoing his idiotic statements back in 2008, yelling at people telling them not to sell their Bear Stearns stock just a week before it went to zero. I mean, what's next? Is he going to endorse Sam Bankman-Fried, the con man behind the FTX crypto collapse? <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? JP Morgan of this generation, Sam Bankman-Fried's FTX, yes. is, is slashing everybody's margin. And uh, average fees per transaction across the industry had to climb by 50%. A lot of that is, is the man, Sam Bankman-Fried. Yes, he called him the next J.P. Morgan because robbing Peter to pay Paul is a brilliant business strategy, according to Jim Cramer. A lot of people keep wondering how can Jim Cramer be so wrong so often and still have a job? Well, the answer is that he's not making a mistake. It's his job to shill garbage stock and pump it and dump it so that him and his elite friends can get rich off of the small individual retail investor who's left holding the bag. Proving once again that the so-called conspiracy theorists were right. So to commemorate the occasion, I've launched my new Conspiracy Theorists Were Right shirt. Order yours from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Like all of my designs, it's available to t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>